Our newly armed hero is going to need some enemies to fight. Let's place some orcs across the top of the screen for him to hurl those shiny new axes at. We create orc.rb within the game objects directory and set the orc class up to inherit from Gemini game object. And much like the dwarf, the orc is going to have the animated image behavior. Within the load method, we specify that it should animate as an orc, which will cause it to load several ping files prefixed with orc underscore from the data directory. And now let's create instances of our new class. Within the load method for the play state, we're going to create four orcs to go across the top of the screen. We call the state's create method and pass it the symbol orc, which will tell it to access orc.rb within the game objects directory and load the orc class from it. We then position that instance across the top of the screen in four different horizontal positions. And here are our orcs. They uh, seem pretty indifferent to our hero's attacks, though. Those axes just pass right through the enemies, and the way to fix this is to make them tangible. So we're going to start by creating a tangible manager within the play state's load method. We create an instance of the tangible manager class, and then set it as the tangible manager for the play state. We then tell the orc that it should have the tangible behavior. Tangible objects have an area called their tangible shape. Inside this area, it counts as a collision. Outside, it doesn't. So we're going to set the orc's tangible shape to a box 48 wide by 48 high. Then we need to specify what should happen when there is a collision. So we call the ontangible collision method, and we're going to send it to the handle collision method, which we'll define in a moment. The handler is going to receive an event object, which is, among other things, going to contain info about the two objects that collided. A reference to the other object collided with is stored in the other tangible attribute of the event. So first we test to see if this orc has collided with another orc and we'll ignore the event if so. If we didn't do this, orcs would kill each other when they ran into each other and we don't want that. So having confirmed that this is an object we actually do want to collide with, we tell the game state sound manager to play the sound orc death. Orc death.wave in the data directory just contains a grunting noise that the orcs will make when they die. But when we play the game, it looks like that collision still isn't actually happening. The reason is that although the orc is tangible, the axe is not. So let's go fix that now. We specify that the axe should have the tangible behavior. And then we also need to set its tangible shape. We'll set that to a box whose size is equal to the axe's image's width and height. That way, even if we change the image later, the tangible box will change shape with it. And then, as with the orcs, we need to specify what will happen when there's a collision. We call on tangible collision, and this time we're going to pass it a block instead of a handler method. Just like a handler method, a handler block receives an event object. And just like with the 
orcs death grunt we're going to tell the state sound manager to play the slice sound that'll be the sound the axe makes when it hits its target also tell the game state to remove self that is the axe object that'll cause the axe to disappear There's our collision. You can hear the axe making the slice sound and the orc making the orc death sound, and also the axe disappears. Let's add some code to our orc's collision handler. Whoa, fast typing. Anyway, let's have the orcs disappear and be replaced by a fading skull when they die. So we're going to reset the orc's image to the death image. And then to handle the fade out, we'll add a one second long countdown to the object. And we're going to have it update 30 times over the course of that second. And with each update of this countdown timer, we're going to make the skull a little bit more transparent. We're going to set the alpha or opacity value of the object's color to lower and lower values the closer to complete the timer is. And when the countdown is complete, that is when the skull is fully faded out, we're going to ask the game state to remove the orc object, making it disappear. And these timer methods are all provided by the timeable behavior, which we'll add to the orc object. So now when there's a collision, we change the orc's image and cause it to fade out over time until it disappears. And you can tell the orcs are truly gone because there's nothing left for the axes to collide with, except for each other. Let's modify the axes so that they don't collide with each other. Within the axis collision handler, we look at the other object that we collided with, and if it's another axe, we're going to ignore the collision. And we're doing this by seeing if the other object has the tag axe applied to it. Of course, there's not much point testing for the axe tag unless the objects actually have the axe tag. The ability to add and test for tags is provided by the taggable behavior. And we ensure that axes are appropriately tagged by calling the add tag method when they load. We use tags on the orcs as well. We assign them the taggable behavior. And we could conceivably add other enemy types later, so we're going to give them the more generic tag enemy. So as you can see now, even when the axes overlap, the collision event is ignored. 